May it please the court, this is my third testimony, this time concerning Johnny Bingo Dawson. Again, I have personal knowledge of what I'm to share with you based on long-term contact with the deceased. Johnny Bingo Dawson was a survivor of the Alert Bay Anglican Indian Residential School, and he was a regular participant in the actions we staged in Vancouver with the friends and relatives of the dis disappeared in protesting and occupying the Catholic, Anglican, and United Churches. As a well-known resident of Vancouver's downtown Eastside community, he was privy to street news concerning the role of Vancouver police and the RCMP in the disappearance and murder of Native women on the street. Bingo Dawson helped to lead the occupation of Holy Rosary Catholic Church in March 2008, as well as that of St. Andrew's Wesley United Church and St. James Anglican Church in downtown Vancouver during November 2009, shortly before he died. At the St. Andrew's Wesley United Church occupation on Sunday, November 22, 2009, Bingo Dawson was physically assaulted by the church's minister and former moderator of the United Church, Gary Patterson. Patterson shoved Bingo Dawson in the chest and ordered him out of the building. When Bingo Dawson and his fellow, fellow native occupiers refused to leave, Patterson screamed, Call the police, someone. If they don't deal with these scumbags, then I will." Unquote. The following week at the St. James Church occupation on Sunday, November 29, 2009, Bingo Dawson led a contingent of residential school survivors into the service and seized the pulpit. He then spoke to the parishioners about the murder of children at the Anglican Alert Bay Residential School where he had been interned as a child. Bingo Dawson yelled out loudly, now all of you hear my prayer. Return those kids' bodies. Later that day, on the northwest corner of Main and Hastings Street around 2 p.m., Bingo Dawson was confronted by a Vancouver Police Department sergeant who wore no name, name tag or ID number. In front of me and our fellow friends and relatives of the disappeared member, Ricky Lavalli, this police sergeant screamed at Bingo Dawson, You try that bullshit again and your ass is mine. Assholes like you go missing, unquote. Six days later, on December 5th, 2009, Johnny Bingo Dawson was found dead in the nearby Mar Bel Mar Bel Belmoral Hotel on East Hastings Street. Now, the BC Coroner's Report, dated June 4th, 2010, was issued by Coroner Matt Brown, number 2009-0280-0149, and contained in our docket of evidence. And this... Coroner's report listed Johnny Bingo Dawson's cause of death as, quote, presumed alcohol withdrawal delirium tremens, unquote. However, the accompanying toxicology report, signed by Dr. Walter Martz, indicated that there was no alcohol or drugs at all in Johnny Bingo Dawson's body at the time of death. No alcohol, and yet cause of death, alcohol poisoning. Well, soon after Bingo Dawson's, <coughs> excuse me, soon after Bingo Dawson's death, an eyewitness to his killing, Ricky Lavalli, who had witnessed, along with me, the police sergeant threatening Johnny Bingo Dawson at the corner of Maine and Hastings. Ricky Lavalli came to me, and he told me what he had witnessed just before Johnny Bingo had died. In a recorded conversation on March 13th, 2010, Rick Lavalli said to me, quote, I saw what they did to Johnny Bingo in the alley behind the Empress Hotel. They worked him over really bad with their clubs, that police sergeant and two other cops. Johnny's face was all busted up and bleeding. His nose was broken. He couldn't stand up. Then he was dead the next day, unquote. The following year, on November 14th, 2011, Lavalli told me that he had been visited by two Vancouver Police Department officers in his rooming house on Powell Street. In a videotape conversation, Ricky Lavalli said, quote, They asked me if I knew anything about Johnny Bingo dying, so I told them what I saw about him getting worked over in the alley by three cops. They told me that wasn't possible and for me not to spread lies about police. Then they asked me about Kevin Annett and what he was planning, but I didn't tell them anything, unquote. Well, less than three months later, on February the 2nd, 2012, Ricky Lavalli was found dead in a Calgary private residence. No coroner's report was issued, and it still has not been issued, despite repeated requests. 
Well, a friend of Ricky Valley's who requests anonymity claims that Ricky was found severely battered and that he died of blows to his head and chest. The witness states that Ricky had told him that he had fled from Vancouver in fear for his life after he had been threatened by the Vancouver police. Accordingly, we name these following individuals as culpable participants and defendants in this case, in participants in the death of Johnny Bingo Dawson and possibly Ricky Lavalle. We name them as culpable defendants. Jim Almas and Jim Chu, former Chiefs of Police for Vancouver. Peter Montague, RCMP Division of Vancouver. Marty Tyndall, former moderator of the United Church of Canada. Gary Patterson, Minister of St. Andrews Wesley United Church and former moderator of the United Church of Canada. Donald Harvey, former moderator of the Anglican Church in Canada. Matt Brown of the BC Coroner's Office and various Jane and John Doe's connected with the Vancouver Police Department in the Anglican and United Churches. Now, the indictment and charges against all three individuals who I've mentioned read as following. I recommend to the Chief Prosecutor of the Court that they hereby indict and charge all of those named in these three previous test testimonies by me. We charge these aforenamed culpable persons and their bodies corporate with the following criminal acts. We charge them, one, with the murder of Harriet Nahani, William Coombs, Johnny Dawson, and possibly Ricky Lavalle, and planning and deliberately committing those crimes with malice aforethought. Two, with planning and participating in a criminal conspiracy to commit and conceal these murders and genocide in Canada, to silence our witnesses and to obstruct justice. And finally, to target and attack the friends and relatives of the disappeared campaign that exposed genocide in Indian residential schools and to criminally assault me, Kevin Annett, Eagle Strong Boys, Harry Nahani, and other people involved in that campaign. Accordingly, based on this indictment, I recommend to the court that they, they issue public summonses to all of those individuals named in these three testimonies involving the murder of Harry Nahani, William Coombs, and Johnny Bingo Dawson and that these culpable defendants, all of whom have been named by me, are ordered to appear in court to answer these public charges and specifications made against them. I also recommend that this indictment and summons be shared with the international courts, human rights groups, government and media all over the world, and that be, they invited, be invited into the court for its deliberations. Again, I thank the court's indulgence, and I will provide all necessary documentation supporting evidence in the attached documents. My name is Kevin Annett, Eagle Strong Voice, and my websites are murderbydecree.com, republicofcanada.org. I thank the court for its indulgence.